Hey everybody, Zach Allen here, and today I'll show you how I use some simple techniques to pull off a really interesting and dynamic photograph using firelight painting and some basic Photoshop. Uh, first, I'll walk you through what firelight painting is and how I do it. And then secondly, I'll walk you through the edit process in Photoshop. It's quite simple, masking, uh, heel brush, but it can be tricky. So I'll show you exactly how I pulled it off and give you a nice little walkthrough. So join me and I'll show you how I did it. Now for the fire painting aspect of this photo, I use a fairly simple homemade torch consisting of a 3 8 inch wide, 4 foot long wooden dowel, seen here, along with a plain white cotton t-shirt. You staple these to the dowel and boom, you have a torch. Now it's very important that you use natural materials because synthetic materials tend to plasticize and can drop hot molten beads of plasticized material all over the place and it's extra dangerous, you could catch the place on fire not good. So once that's stapled onto the dowel, you add a liberal portion of BBQ starter fluid and I mean a lot. Basically soak the thing because you want it to last for a few minutes. Typically they only burn for maybe two minutes tops but typically that's all you need. And of course the final ingredient, good old-fashioned silicone oven glove. Uh, you have to hold the torch downward uh, at the start in order to do these photos because you have to complete an entire circle behind the subject. So holding it down would typically burn your hands, so you need this wonderful, elegant, beautiful, fireproof oven glove. One of the complicating aspects of this kind of photography is that you are literally doing everything. So not only am I making the shapes with the fire behind the model, I'm also triggering the camera simultaneously using these cheap little guys. It's the Yongno RF603C, very simple uh, wireless trigger. It doesn't use Bluetooth, it uses its own little RF frequency, but it's perfect for what I need. These are about 30 bucks for a pair, and they're amazing. Very low latency, which is very important because it's key that when I hit that little button, the shutter flings open and it captures the full range of motion. So the way it works is, this guy goes onto the remote port of the camera, and the second remote is in my hand. So I've got that grasped with my other hand that's not on the torch. I hit the button as soon as I start to do the motion with the torch, and I release it as soon as it's come back down to the bottom center, basically. And when that's all put together, it looks something like this. Now, as you'll see in the final product, it's important that whoever is sitting on that stool is wearing a dress, typically. You need something that is flowy and that can drape over the front of the stool. It's going to make your job a lot easier when it comes time to edit. Uh, and as a bonus, it hides most of my body. Typically the only thing you'll see in the final image is maybe my feet. Now, we'll shoot about 15 or 20 images, basically as long as that little window of blue hour will allow because once it gets past that little window, uh, it gets too dark and there's really not enough dynamic range to bring out the foreground and background. It's just too dark. So once we're done for the day and we've distracted a bunch of beachgoers, it's time to do the edit. All right, so after a long afternoon at the beach, here's what we end up with. Um, as you can see, and as I said earlier, of course there are my feet, um, but more importantly, there is the stool, uh, this glaring, Ikea stool. So our, our main goal here is to get rid of this and blend in the textures well enough to where it doesn't look like she's just sitting there on the beach on a stool. Now, uh, for this photo, I had I kind of wanted to go for the vibe of like a you know a transcendent uh, master floating, uh, and I think I got that. The pose looks pretty darn good. Um, of course, the, the edit is going to be pretty intense because that's a lot of stuff to get rid of. So. Um, I've already done some basic color edit, edits and like levels and stuff. So here's how it looks right out of the camera. As you can see, um, the background is pretty dark, um, but that's okay. 
if you balance it well enough, you're able to bring that back out with really minimal noise and we were luckily able to balance that pretty well. Um, so first things first, we're gonna take it into Photoshop and get rid of that pesky stool. All right, so here we have our image open in Photoshop and I've opened a new layer here. So all the edits we're going to be doing today are gonna be non-destructive. We're only painting in that layer so it does not affect um, the original image at all. So my first focus is going to be right here in the dress area. As you can see, we have a fairly clear silhouette of the chair leg. So I'm going to use my clone stamp by tapping S and then I'm going to take this really nice uh, translucent part of the dress and then paint that over this so it totally gets rid of that silhouette. So here we go. Hit Alt on the keyboard, select a target which is going to be the cloned area and then we start painting over the dress. Okay, so now that we've got that silhouette taken care of, we're going to get this little part of the stool that protrudes right down from the edge of the dress. So once again, we're going to be using our clone tool. And with that, we're going to select the edge of this flame here. And we want to be careful not to repeat any patterns. So if I were to take this right here and then start it again right there, it would be very obvious to the human eye that something was doubled up. So whenever you're using the clone tool, you want to be very careful not to use a repetitive pattern so that it just doesn't look bad. All right, so using that, we're going to get rid of this little part of the stool. Okay, so now that we've got most of that portion of the uh, stool taken care of, now comes the challenging part of removing the rest of the bottom part. So for this portion here, I'm simply going to take this part and put it over there. Uh, this random uh, pattern in the sand <clears throat> is, is good for this because it's random enough that if you take some from over here and put it over there, it's really not that noticeable. Like if it were something uniform, like grass, maybe it'd be a little more tricky. Um, but luckily this random pattern sort of lends itself well to cloning. So once again, you wanna make sure that you're taking your uh, target from a similar horizontal as the place that you're going to be using it. So if I wanna make sure that this blue starts where it should, I'm going to put my target there, click, and then begin right on the edge where it should be and paint down. And that's what we're going to do. So let's get rid of the rest of that darn stool. Okay, so as you can see here, we've done a, a pretty good job of getting rid of the main portion of the stool. Um, there are some textural issues. We're going to come back to that later and fix it, as well as this little area here where you can very clearly see this completely straight angle. We're going to come back to that later with a liquify tool. Um, but for now, I'm going to focus on the fire. Once again, we're going to take our clone stamp tool and just get rid of this little part here, which shouldn't be too hard. We've got enough of these other sort of fire textures to clone so it shouldn't be an issue uh, getting rid of this so once again you're going to hit s for the clone stamp and get to business okay so now that we've got the part of the stool that was in the fire relatively well taken care of now we need to imitate these edges of the flame because I was able to get rid of the stool and it looks convincing enough but as you see on the rest of this uh, fire part here there's a pretty well-defined edge um, so there's a special trick we can do again with the clone stamp tool we can actually rotate the direction of the stamp so uh, if you go to window and click on clone source you'll get this panel here that gives you some really cool tools for the clone stamp tool. Um, so in this case, I wanna take this little edge here 
and put it here so that we have a nice little fiery edge on that. So I'm going to go to the clone uh, source tool. I'm going to say 45 degrees and select this edge here. And we're going to go ahead and take that and paint it in there and then repeat it a few times. I'm going to pick a few different uh, spots until we get that looking real nice. Okay, as you can see, we managed to get a nice little edge on that flame. It doesn't look wonky, it's, it's matched and everything. Um, but as a result of removing all this stuff, you can see it kind of looks weird. There's like a shadow on this side. Now this is just really kind of how it looked in real life, but there's, a, there's an asymmetry there that uh, to, to my eye doesn't look good. So um, you can see the stool is completely gone. Again, we still have these straight lines. We're gonna fix that in a minute. But for now, I want to get rid of this sort of odd splotch here. Again, that's there in real life, but once you remove the stool and everything, it just feels kind of abrupt. So what I'm gonna do, I've already copied the background. You select your background, you hit Control J. I've made two copies. So I'm gonna take one copy and bring it above our main layer. I'm gonna flip it by going to Edit, and then we are going to transform whenever I find it. There we go, transform. We're going to flip it horizontally so that it is in the other direction. And then we are going to put a mask on it. And we're going to fill that mask by hitting control or excuse me, alt backspace. That's going to fill the mask. And then we're going to bring the opacity down on it because we don't want to paint in a really harsh, um, just completely cover everything up. We want to have some of the underlying texture still there. So I'm going to try 61%. And now we select our brush tool by hitting B. And we go in and let's start painting in some of that underlying texture with a white brush. And if we get this just right, it should take that abrupt um, asymmetry there and tone it down a little bit. So let's paint that in. Okay, so for one of the final parts of the edit, we need to use the liquify tool. Now to use this, you select your background image go to filter and then select liquify. And this is gonna allow you to push around pixels and sort of sculpt that dress into a more flowing natural shape. Well, as natural as we can get it. So we're gonna push that around. There's no exact science to it. It's mace This is where your artistic side comes out. <laughs> so you're gonna make it as flowy as you can. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go back in and with the clone stamp, I have to clean up those stretched areas around the edges because when you use the liquify tool, it moves things around. It makes them look sort of stretched out. So you've gotta fix those nearby textures. Once we've got that done, we're almost there. Um, for this next part, all I need to do is use some curves layers to sort of make everything pop and maybe add a little color. Okay, so this is already a fairly sort of contrasty image, but I like contrast a lot. So I'm gonna make us a curve layer and make these brighter parts a little more contrasty. So you click down here, you make yourself a curves layer and to adjust the highlights, you're gonna put a little dot up here and you wanna anchor it down here. This is your shadow, so anchor that and then make yourself a dot a higher up and that's going to allow you to bring up the the highlights so i want to make that underneath a little more contrasty so there we go i think that looks good now we're just going to use this right in this area so once again i'm going to hit alt backspace excuse me control backspace 
And that brings me a, a completely filled in mask. Then we're gonna hit B for brush, make that brush a bit bigger. And we're gonna paint in just where this under part is. And you see that gives you a nice contrasty. And it also, at the same time, it'll, it'll deepen these colors a little bit, which, which I like. It's a personal preference. Everybody edits differently. Um, but for me, I, I like it. I like it a lot. So that looks better to me. It's a little more punchy. It's a little brighter, maybe a little too bright actually. So we'll bring that back down. So to do that, you click on this top dot, and this is gonna bring your highlights back down to earth a little bit. I think that's pretty good. That's not quite so stark. Yeah, I like it. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the, the flames here. Uh, if you really wanna make those pop, you want to um, bring down the, the, the um, shadows a little bit. So that's gonna give it a little more texture and contrast in the wings. You don't wanna overdo it because it can make your colors a little bit too drastic and that looks weird. So as before, we've made a mask and with the wings here, I'm just gonna do a, a quick select. So I hit Q and, or excuse me, W and we're just gonna select this fire here. Now Photoshop does a fairly good job of selecting complex objects, especially the 2022 version. Uh, if you're on the latest CC, it's seems like it's smarter than ever, thankfully. And occasionally you will have to clean these up. Like this one didn't get that little edge at the bottom, but that's okay. We can go back in with just a manual brush. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So if you wanna see where exactly the mask is, you're gonna hit the backslash key on your keyboard and it will turn your screen red. So everything red is masked out. Everything that's not is where you want to paint. So just paint that in there. Not quite so sloppily. Make a smaller brush here. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. Definitely a little more punchy. Uh, we've got the underneath part is definitely more vibrant. And so we're just gonna repeat this for areas throughout the image until we have a complete photograph. Okay, so we've used curves to sort of touch up areas that we want to see a little more prominently and to bring the color out of. And I've tweaked the color a little bit with uh, hues and saturations and a few built-in Photoshop uh, lookup tables, which they're built into Photoshop. Feel free to play around with them. Uh, if you just click down here and uh, go to color lookup, there's a bunch of them. Color edits are more to taste than anything else, so I really won't go into that. Um, but for a final touch, I want to add a little more texture into that sky. So I've got a few pre-saved uh, background images that I like to use. I got these from Unsplash. Now Unsplash is a nice little website. It gives you royalty-free photos. These are just free to use for anybody. So you're not stealing from anyone when you use these, uh, which is nice. So you want to get one that's sort of uh, colorless because when you're blending it in, uh, you don't want it to clash at all. Now with the mostly gray clouds, you're able to blend it in without having any sort of issues um, with your main photo's color. So we're gonna bring that in. We're gonna make a mask, fill it in. And this part's pretty easy. I know Photoshop now has like a automatic sky replacement and I've tried it, it's sort of hit and miss. Um, so we're going to select this guy with our qu quick select tool using W and once again we're going to go to the brush and just brush it in. Now to start with obviously it's, it's kind of strong so we don't want it to be like that. So what we're going to do is go over here, click the image and then from this drop down we're going to go to soft light and look at that. It really makes it blend in nicely. It brings the color back from the original photograph. Now that's still a bit too strong for my liking, so what we're gonna do from there is adjust down the opacity a little bit so it's not quite so in your face. And there we go. I'd say that looks pretty darn natural. Um, and then the final thing to do really is to go in here and uh, clean up under the bridge because it didn't, um, it didn't select that automatically. It's a little trickier to get, so 
Um, I'm gonna go through there, clean that up, and um, then that's gonna be it. Well, there you have it. Um, with a little bit of fire, a lot of patience, and a little bit of Photoshop skills, you can go from this to this. I hope you enjoyed uh, my little tutorial here. This is by no means the definitive way to do a levitation photo or even edit it. There's a million ways to create a photograph. This one is just mine. I hope you enjoyed me sharing this with you. Uh, if you enjoyed this, if you learned something, please leave a comment, like, dislike. If you hated it, if you hate me, let me know as well. Hey, uh, you know, I can take it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.